back in uh, 2015 when uh, Sam Klukas scored a couple of goals in a 2 0 win. But in the league, the last time Chesterfield beat Scunthorpe was uh, actually back in September 2014. And they were 4 1 winners that day. Santi de Dobra, edge of the area, chance for Mandeville, turns away and wide to King. Jeff King with the cross in again this time. Oh, great chance for Dobra! Chesterfield leveling. Twenty-seven minutes gone, and Armando Dobra has got Chesterfield parity. So Scunthorpe's lead lasts seven minutes. by Oldacre, this is Dobrit on the ball again for Chesterfield, Mandeville, Palmer to Jones, King advanced down the right here, that ball's in towards Asante, King in support, it's a quasi Asante on the ball, now it's Mandeville, played square to Oldacre, Clements is out wide on the left, Oldacre through to Asante, Asante with a great chance! And the quasi Asante! Puts Chesterfield in front. In stoppage time at the end of the first half. A quasi Asante back in the starting lineup. And the spotlights look like going in with a half time lead. A great move by Chesterfield. A quasi Asante gets his fifth goal of the season. And he'll be delighted that he managed to finish there. Great little through ball in the end. Santi, who still had work to do, but he found, found the room to turn and shoot and put it past Dewhurst. So, back to the free kick. Jeff King stands over the ball. The referee whistle goes to take it. King strikes one. Oh, yes! Great goal from Jeff King! Into the top corner of the net. Jeff King... He's out on his own again as Chesterfield's top goal scorer with eight goals this season now. What a brilliant goal out of from King. Into the roof of the net off the hand of the goalkeeper who couldn't keep the ball out. The power was there, the accuracy was there and Jeff King gives the spot right daylight now. King. Oh, and a mystic tap. Shimanga's in here. Kabongo Shimanga takes it around, boys. Shimanga shot! And Kabongo Shimanga makes it 4 1 to Chesterfield. Delight for the home supporters. And Kabongo Shimanga has certainly served the three points now. off the bench Shimanga gets his 8th goal of the season as well and it all came from a mistake by what I think is Scunthorpe's most impressive player George Taft he's had a great game he's been really solid at the back but a mistake there by the Scunthorpe number 15 has let in Kabongo Shimanga and you can't do that and expect him not to score King again now to put the cross in towards the back post Grand is there and it's over the line from T T Williams Chesterfield the level the ball came in from Jeff King to the back post Jamie Grimes there made the header and Tyrone Williams put it over the line 
the West Bromwich Albion lead lasted about five minutes. But Chesterfield now a level. Tyrone Williams, the goal scorer. Dobra. Williams. King, oh, he tried, oh, he got to find Mandeville in. Yeah, Mandeville had to backtrack to get it, I think. Old Laker, wide again to Jeff King. Mandeville's made a good run. This is Liam Mandeville on the ball, into the area! And it's Armando Dobra! The salute in front of the baggy supporters. But Armando Dobra has levelled it for the Spyrites at two apiece. Dobris lost that one through, chance here for Quigley, saved by the goalkeeper and then Dobra! Oh my save! Armando Dobra gives the Sparrows the lead for the first time in the game. Again, great movement from Chesterfield going forward. The ball played through to Quigley, Quigley shot, saved by Button. Dobra hungry for the ball as ever. He's the first to get to it on five years of the roof of there to give the Sparrights a lead for the first time in the match. It's Chesterfield three, West Bromwich Albion two, with about two and a half minutes of the first half remaining. if he did but uh, a corner kick is what's going to happen anyway over on the far side of the field another opportunity here for Chesterfield the ball comes in once more from Jeff King and the head of this time is Ash Palmer Ashley Palmer gets his first goal in a spiral shirt and gives Chesterfield the lead in the 88th minute of the game club a few weeks back but uh, he looked very comfortable in that uh, centre back role for the Spyrites goal scoring isn't his game but he's got one there from a set piece Ash Palmer gives Chesterfield the lead with just a couple of minutes of the 90 minutes remaining and now Banks as Chesterfield tidy up and get the ball forward again that's a good ball from Banks across to Colclough Ryan Colclough now with uh, Moss at his back there Mandeville King out wide on the right in space Little ball in for Dobra. Dobra inside the area. Chance here for Mandeville! <laughs> Liam Mandeville gets the first goal of the night for Chesterfield. A well worked move. Jeff King out there on the right hand side of the field. Played a short ball into Armando Dobra. Dobra got inside the penalty area and pulled it back. And when the ball came out to at the edge of the area, Mandeville fired in a beauty. It's Chesterfield one, Woking three. Plenty of runs in the box there and the ball goes in. Oh, and he's scum on the way! It's Dobra! I think it's Amando Dobra that's got it! 
he snuck it over the line of the back post. And Chesterfield have parity before the half-time whistle. Delight from the supporters. It was the delivery from King who was a scrubber in the six-yard box. And it was a man who got with it, stabbed it over the line. It's Chesterfield 1, Knox County 1. Blocked at source and rebounds nicely for Banks. Then cross comes in again, half cleared and then smashed in off the bar, over the bar, followed up either way. Paul McCallum has scored in the first minute of the second half. It was him that had the acrobatic effort on goal. It bounced down off the crossbar and I think probably just over the line, came back to him and he stuck it away anyway. 46 minutes gone. Aldershot Town 1, Chesterfield 1, Steve Gibbs. Yeah, just not the start that Aldershot Town wanted to this second half. Just keep it, keep it tight, keep that lead. Don't give Chesterfield any cause for optimism. And now, barely 40 seconds into that second half, their level. Excellent cross from Shackleford, but I think Aldershot Town should have dealt with it. Tyler Cordner didn't really get a he clean head to it. Palmer. Chesterfield played it out toward the left-hand side. Grimes to Colclough. Colclough taking two on there. Dobra. Dobra shot! Armando Dobra strikes with the spotlights with his tenth goal of the season. And Chesterfield finally got level. Just inside the Wrexham half, with one minute of normal time remaining at the racecourse ground. Quigley holds the ball off to Kokolov, gets the shot away, no he doesn't, does that time and it's in. And they get one back. A brilliant piece of improvisation by Kokolov. An excellent dummy. The Wrexham defence stood still. Dummies it there. Toes a turn to block. And an excellent finish into the bottom corner. Well, the player goes down. Ball comes across to Shackleton on the far side. There's Oli to intercept, but didn't pick out the grey shirt as Oldega. Now played through, lovely run by. Mandeville, Mandeville puts it across there and into the back of the net, McCallum puts it in there and he, too easy the run through from Mandeville put it into a dangerous place and there was McCallum just to poke it into the back of the net and we've got a level game again here on 44 minutes Yeah, got down the side there didn't he? I think it was, was it Mandeville who got down Mandeville, the side? Yeah. Faded across to McCallum who's Both sides giving everything because the delivery comes in from Mandeville Oh, and it's been poked into the back of the net. The Marshall felt like he was fouled, and Paul Cook turns to aggravate the fans there. And that, well, it was in Marshall's hands. They looked like there was a nudge, but that doesn't help. Gates said scores. It ended up in the back of the net. I don't see who got the final prod on it to put it in the back of the net. It was in a bunks of body of players, and Gates said an absolute sucker punch at the end there. Colclough's got his top off, I think it might have been him, but... Yeah. Um, from a Colchester United lone eight, will take from this near side, right-footed in-swinger. They're all massed on the edge of the box here for Chesterfield, other than Colclough, who's stationed right in front of Steve Arnold. Up to the far post, headed in! Oh. Not picked up at the far post, they all massed on the edge of the area. I think it's Lawrence Maguire who's got on the end of it to power the header beyond a statuesque Steve Arnold and Chesterfield have the lead. Blues nil, Chesterfield won. Yeah, just plain and simple, poor marking from the corner. Steve Arnold had no chance. It's fired to the back post. Got a lot of pace on it as well, so he can't come and get it. He can't get involved. Just a man got a free run at the back stick. And Chesterfield boss now in his second spell with the Derbyshire club, just pointing out a couple of things and also ready to make a substitution. 
It's his 205th game in charge at Chesterfield tonight, and his win ratio is 44%. Had good success with them first time around. Looking to get them back in the Football League, and he's watching Cole Clough to the edge of the area, oh. and he scores! And Paul Cook turns and punches the air, and Ryan Cole Clough turns and runs to the travelling band of Chesterfield fans. A smart finish from the edge of the area. South End nil, Chesterfield two. Yeah, and he just outmuscled. I think it was Cav Miley on the edge of the box, then cut inside, and then none, none of the centre halves couldn't see who was closest. Then decided to step out and close him down, so he just smashed the shot, left-footed. So a great opportunity here with the Spinites, with Paul McCallum from the spot. Paul McCallum finds it home for one 0 and gets his third goal of the season in a Chesterfield shirt. Adam steps up and scores. Fires in low to his left. Howes went the wrong way. Uh, and kind of out of nowhere, Chesterfield have the lead. Yeah, Paul from Wilson really. You know, like you said, there was been no real threat to either goal. Both teams look comfortable in possession. Both teams put each other a little bit under pressure. And just goes to show you there, they pressed a little bit. Drew, drew the mistake from Howes and uh, unfortunately Wilson had paid the price and Chesterfield go one up. Even a fourth official thought he'd gone out of the ground. Yeah, I assume that was nestling in someone's uh, rose garden. Oh, Cook blows blind. Quickly goes forward. Dallas is running alongside him, but quickly goes by himself. Plays in Colclough, who's got a clear sight of goal. And that's a brilliant challenge. And Mandeville turns in the, the rebound. Stone shooting themselves in the foot. Masters their own undoing here. Really disappointing from a Willstone perspective there. A very un uncharacteristic blind pass back to uh, from Jack Cook there. Put Stones under pressure. Quickly probably overdid it a little bit. And it was a brilliant recovery from Ashley Charles initially. But the ball just wouldn't find its way to house or, or find someone to get their foot through it. And Mandeville was on hand at the back post to steer it home. And Chesterfield had doubled their lead just moments before half-time, albeit the eight minutes or so we've got left if you like in the front three hopefully he'll, hopefully he'll, there's a bit more muscle and and uh, experience in him in the National League that might help get at the likes of King and Palmer Colclough has space here it's a lovely ball into the middle and that's three 3-0 three Dallas is on the end of it there's the commentator's curse just said about Colclough has uh, been a little bit disappointed in this game but it's a beautiful ball across the face of goal and uh, Andrew Dallas is on hand to just steer it past Sam Howes, as I said, the good goals are scored in the six-yard box. And that, I think, is game, set and match. Yeah, it's a massive uphill task now for Willstone. He's got playing for a bit of pride here. And I hope they don't take a smashing at home. It's not, we don't want to see that at the Vale. But, yeah, that was very easy for Chesterfield. Stone's looking for some kind of lifeline to get themselves back into the game. But, again, Chesterfield working incredibly hard and yeah. making it very tough for Stone's to make any inroads into... Reflecting what Paul Cook's saying here down the oh, byline. Cook's caught on the ball again. Colcross going to go for the chip. Oh, that's delightful. Wow. And that all came from Paul Cook telling his team to stay disciplined. They've stayed disciplined. They've shut the ball down. They've harried the ball. And then you've got that quality in Colclough. He knew exactly what he was doing. As soon as he got the ball on the edge of the box... He saw where Howes was and he knew what he was doing there. He's executed it perfectly. It's an excellent it's a goal. Cracking finish. It's a cracking finish. So Banks it is who will take the responsibility from the spot. Up against Will Jaskalina. It's going to be a long run-up, it would seem, here from Banks. Here he comes. 1 0 Chesterfield. Yaskalainen beaten. Backs with the penalty. 
the Sparites in front. Well, you're certainly expecting him to go for the laces and hit this hard. But it was a confident penalty from him. Goalkeeper goes quite early. Just waits for him to make that first move. Jasko Leinem, just a side foot down the middle. Mandeville. Jones. Grimes to Maguire. That's in again for Banks. Great chance here, Ollie Banks. He's taking the deflection, comes out of the King. Jeff King now, can he get round Capello? The former Halifax man still in possession, plays it across there nicely for Colclough. Maguire. The ball in for Banks and the header for Ollie Banks! Ollie Banks, the goal scorer! In stoppage time at the end of the first half. Congratulated by Joe Quigley there. The move eventually working out for Chesterfield. The ball coming back in. And uh, the ball, the, it looked like the ball was going to be played out to the left. Instead, it was cut inside to Banks. Um, Banks there heading home. Sam Johnson stretching for it. Well, Banks heading it right into the corner. And in stoppage time at the end of the first half, the Sparrows have the lead. Chesterfield 1, Halifax Town 0. Adam Senior, the Bolton Loney, takes the throw in. Well won header there by uh, Maguire. This is Ryan Colcliffe on it now. Mandeville, nobody out to the right. Jeff King going out there now. King receiving the ball. Plays that one through to Colcliffe. That's a great first touch. Mandeville now into the box. Oh, a chance here for Dobra. With his back to goal, he manages to turn and score. Chesterfield's second goal of the game. Armando Dobre gets his 11th goal of the season. It was a well worked move by Chesterfield. And Dobre gives the Sparrows a 2 0 lead here. A well worked goal. Ryan Coakley put a little flick through there to uh, find Mandeville. Mandeville put the ball into the edge of the six yard box. Dobre received the ball. It went past Dallas. Dobre received the ball. He got his back to goal. And it looked like his opportunity had gone, but he managed to turn, face his opponent, face the goal, and sneak it in there at the near post. Amando Dobra, Chesterfield's top scorer with 11 goals this season, give the Spinach now a 2 0 lead. Jeff King to take it. Goldfield makes the near post run. King, Mandeville. Laid off by Cole Club, it's Liam Mandeville once more. Mandeville shot! Oh yes! Liam Mandeville gives the spot actually! Here was a well worked goal in the end from that corner by Jeff King. Cole Club played it back out to King. King into Mandeville. Mandeville took a couple of touches before he shot, but he knew exactly where he wanted to put it. And it was past Ryan, Ryan Whitley, the York goalkeeper, and into the corner of the net. Mandeville trots back to take the ball out of the hands of Mike Jones so he can take charge of this throw in. <clears throat> and he's played it in too quickly. So 25 yards out, leads it back to Jones, switches it to Maguire on the far side, the Chesterfield left, still plenty of blue shirts forward, Uke Booms on the chalk on the far side, 25 yards out, plays it in field and uh, taken by Banks on the edge of the 18-yard area, he sees space with Mandeville on the far side, header from Mandeville and Mandeville has scored with his head to put Chesterfield into the lead in the 71st minute, what a peach of a ball from Banks, there's nothing the defence could do about that, Mandeville still had plenty of work to do though to get on the end of that, loop it over Elliot just am and it is Dagenham and Redbridge nil, Chesterfield one. Thanks. Palmer. King. Is it off to Mandeville? Old Acre. 
edge of the area of Dallas, back to Mandeville. Mandeville puts the cross in this time. Cole Clough's had a... Ryan Cole Clough finally finds the breakthrough for Chesterfield. A good move down that right-hand side, and when the ball came in from Mandeville, Ryan Cole Clough heads home his fifth goal of the season for the Spyrites. King hits it long to Mandeville. Dallas wanting it played out to the right. It's still Mandeville in possession. Now it's Dallas. Andy Dallas taking on Cissé. It's still Dallas. He's gone past two. King. King with the cross. Oh, he's over the line again. It's Ryan Coakluff. Scored his second goal of the game. And the Spyrites are level. King and Dallas doing the work on the far side there on the right for Ryan Colclough gets his sixth goal of the season and his second of the game Chesterfield levelling now at 2-2 it's Colclough in the 89th minute King once more great turn by Dallas still Andy Dallas drive the shot I say, Andy Dallas has got the winner surely now for Chesterfield and easily are broken. Chesterfield have done it right at the last there. And surely now the three points is staying at the Tenney Stadium. Great work on that right hand side. And Andy Dallas, who's had a couple of crosses that have been wasted, he got on the edge of the area there. He got it in his mind to shoot, but it was a case of finding room. And when he did find the room, he pulled the trigger and gave the Spyrites the lead for the first time in the game. Dawson. And now Nuble. Lapsley. Well robbed by McCallum. Ollie Banks. Banks to strike one. It's deflected. He took a huge deflection. But Oli Banks isn't going to mind. Well, you've got to say it's what they deserve so far. Oli Banks gives Chesterfield the lead on 25 minutes. As I say, the, the, he, he shot well. He took a huge deflection, though. Bounced up in the air and over the goalkeeper, Mark Halstead, and into the back of the net. But they all count. Dallas is available. Mandeville tries to make a run. It goes instead to Banks. King, the first time ball across the field to Maguire. Colclough wide on the left. That's her ball. This is Ryan Colclough now taking on Stubbs. Colclough puts the cross in. Oh, and headed off the ball. Oh, my Dallas. It's another goal for Chesterfield. And Andy Dallas scored his second goal in as many games. The ball coming in from the right hand side. The header by McCallum came back off the bar. And Andy Dallas gives us by rights a second goal. Chesterfield 2, Torquay United 0. It's going well at the moment for the Spyrites. King will take it in the end. Two banks. Old Acre. Mandeville again trying to put King in, but Torquay were wise to that. With uh, Collins getting in the way. This is Palmer. Dallas. Dallas with the shot! Oh, yes! And 
Ali Gerasi on fire. He gets dragged to the floor by Paul McCallum. But Andy Dallas gets his second goal of the game. And it's his third goal in the last two games. And Chesterfield now take a 3-0 lead with five minutes to go to half-time. Dallas on the edge of the area, firing that shot. I thought for a moment the goalkeeper was going to get there, but it was right in the top corner. And Andy Dallas has found the rich made of scoring form. Chesterfield 3, Torquay United 0. King. Away by Moxie. McCallum. Lays it off for Mandeville. Holdacre. It's a good ball out to Colclough. Ryan Colclough. The ball inside again, chance for Mandeville, he couldn't find the room to turn. Maguire backs him up though, Maguire with the cross. And Mandeville with the shots! <laughs> Maguire's cross, McCallum with the header down, McCallum with the assist. And Liam Mandeville with the goal. It's less than two minutes into the second half. And Chesterfield have added a fourth goal. Liam Mandeville is the scorer getting his ninth goal of the season he didn't score on Saturday but he scored in both the previous games before that and he's a scorer again tonight Mandeville gets Chesterfield fourth goal of the night and an early goal in the second half is just what the Spyrax needed four goals to the good now and Torquay, I don't think they're going to come back from this, are they? <laughs> McCallum is back post. Maguire and Palmer as well, all ready to make their runs. Grimes is into it more in the middle. And the ball goes in. Oh, and he's running to the back of the net again! And he's Dallas again! Andy Dallas gets his hat trick. The ball coming in to Dallas, and he was with the outside of the boot for Andy Dallas to score his hat trick on the night. Well, they said he was on fire early on, but he's having a great time now, isn't he? The free kick coming in there from King. And Andy Dallas, he, he more or less had a stab at it with the outside of the boot. And straight into the back of the net. And Chesterfield now lead by five goals to nil here at the uh, Technic Stadium. It's going to be their biggest win of the season if they can keep this going. Here's Mike Jones. Colclough has found Dallas and Chesterfield have their breakthrough. Seven minutes into the second half and Andy Dallas makes it four goals in as many games. They've had to work really hard for the opening goal here. But at last, Paul Cook's side have got the breakthrough and it's Dallas who's hitting the goal trail at precisely the right time. I think just more relief more than anything for Chesterfield that they've now finished the back of the net. Maystone had an early warning sign at the start of this second half. Moving the ball so much quicker, that's what I was talking, what was lacking in that first. Old Acre, a brilliant ball round the corner to Cole Clough, and then all of a sudden Dallas makes the run and says, put me in, put me in. And he does it, great first touch, excellent second touch, which leads to the finish. But you cannot defend against play like that when you move the ball quickly quality goal I can tell you that there's also uh, been a, a goal that might concern Chesterfield fans uh, Woking have taken the lead against Solihull Moors uh, Paul Barr with his first league goal for the club so that'll help focus Chesterfield minds I think it did 
Well, they've doubled their lead, Chesterfield, through Bailey Clements. Far from a regular this season. And he's popped up when it mattered. And I'm sure he has just clinched victory today and in all likelihood, third place for Chesterfield. Tidy finish there from Bailey Clements. Back in the side again. It's just been a different Chesterfield in this second half. The way they've moved the ball, found space. It's a brilliant ball in there from King to his left back partner. It's a tidy finish from him. It's an area of the game that I think Jeff King's ball in more and more, making more crosses with the left foot, having more shots with the left foot. Been a right footed player. That's a wonderfully flighted ball to the far post. It's a tidy finish. Booking their tickets for the postseason soon. Good news for the Chesterfield fans as they won't have to travel far for the semi final at least. Looking like it's going to be here next Sunday, unless there's a very dramatic collapse in the next 25 minutes. Awkward from King, but he dealt with it. chasing and he's got Dallas alongside him it's Andy Dallas two for him three for Chesterfield and that wraps it up a far superior second half showing from the Spyrites has seen them home and dry in the pouring rain here third place is theirs and with Andy Dallas in goal scoring form the sky is the limit for Chesterfield right now was a simple goal to score, but Paul McCallum still has a lot to do. Just a simple ball over the top, and I think when you're just looking, Dallas heavily in an offside position. When the ball was played forwards, but McCallum still has the awareness, still got a lot to do. Cuts inside Brown nicely, strikes it hard, strikes it low, past the goalkeeper. A much more accomplished second half performance from Chesterfield. Well taken goal there. Lurko. With Quigley. Callum. Quigley. Could be a fourth here for Chesterfield. There is a fourth for Chesterfield. Ryan Colclough on target. Maidstone falling apart in the latter stages here. And Chesterfield extending a four-goal winning margin. You have to say that in this second half, it has been deserved. Oh, they've been brilliant second half. Everything about them that was lacking in the first has really shown playing with confidence. And once they got that first goal, they've not let Maidstone off the hook. They've just kept going and going and going. And what was lacking in the first half, this bit of quality. Great pressure there from Quigley. But these little through balls that were missing in the first half, Brilliant ball there. Fowler's playing him on side. And then he has the composure and the control to take it around the goalkeeper. I have to say, a deserved goal as well from him because he's worked tirelessly for Chesterfield. And he's going to be another important player for Paul Cook next Sunday as well. A potential match winner always, Ryan Colclough. Really exciting player. That's his seventh goal for Chesterfield. And they find an equaliser. Mandeville's ball to the back stick. Only got it away once again. They haven't done much wrong in defence today, the Ravens. It will be tested time and again in the remaining 32 minutes plus stoppages. Colclough driving one. And it's deflected in! Andy Dallas celebrates, but I think it went in of Deji Leroy. One way or the other, Chesterfield are back on terms just before the hour mark, and it is game on once again in this second semi-final. Well, it's another goal. When you look at the quality of a ball that goes in that causes the defender an issue. They've been pressing in these areas. And 
which is good play again down that right hand side. Just teases the ball into an area. It's an own goal, isn't it? But what Andy Dallas does really well, he puts pressure on the defender. It's an unfortunate one facing towards your own goal. Maybe a, a brilliantly executed free kick if Holgate can get it up and over or King. Maybe go goalkeeper's side. King had a go last time. It's Old Aker, he scores! And Chesterfield lead for the first time today. They've turned it around in the second half. Darren Old Aker's strike gave Reese Charles Cook no chance. And Chesterfield are now 10 minutes plus stoppages away for a trip to Wembley. That's a quality free kick. From Dan and Old Acre. I mentioned how far this out was in terms of trying to get up and over or just go goalkeeper's side and hit the target. You can see the three Chesterfield players. They just create that little bit of space for him to hit the ball through. You see Grimes there, he just moves and he goes straight through the middle of that. It's a brilliantly executed free kick. Takes a little deflection on the way through. Not really much the goalkeeper could do about that. Hasn't scored since November, Darren Oldacre. Certainly saved it for a special occasion. Is it too simplistic to say that Bromley are playing for penalties? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Charles Cook took his time when he got the ball. It's just game management now from Andy Woodman's side to see it out. Aldaker took a swing at it. Didn't really connect. Chance here for Mandeville. He scores! And Chesterfield's lead is restored. The Spyrites creep ahead once Come again. On! On! Liam Mandeville absolutely smashed that into the back of the net. It's been the most successful season of his career. And this is the biggest goal he's got this campaign so far. That's Mitchell Burkham on the edge of the box. It just gets caught on the ball. Trombley just trying to be a bit too clever with it. Just clear your lines there. A heavy touch from him that allows Mandeville to drive it into the box. A sensational strike from him. Such a heavy touch there. Slows himself down and smashes it into the back of the net. Having the season of his career in a Chesterfield shirt. And could that be the winner? To give the Spyrites the lead. Inside six minutes, Dallas for Chesterfield, and he scores! What a start for the Spyrites! A man on the losing side in last season's promotion final with Sonny Hill. Scores the penalty that puts Chesterfield in front early doors at Wembley. Well, just incredible. You try and plan for games and then just sometimes things like this just happen. And Knox County have not started this game well at all. And I have to say, it's just a cool, confident penalty to cipher that down the middle and wait for Slocum to move. Brilliant start from Chesterfield. Couldn't have dreamed for a better start here. The Spyrites. Dobra, he's been found as well. Quigley's in the middle. Dobra might go alone. He did! What a finish! Chesterfield regained the lead. Three minutes into extra time. It's a big kiss from his manager for Dobra. That was quality. Well, we certainly know of his attributes and his qualities, Amano Dobra. And this is what we want to concentrate on. This is what we want to see from a quality player. And they use the ball so well. They move it quickly. It's banks into him. And then all of a sudden, you've got those one-on-one -on -one situations. I just think as a defender in Rawlinson, you have to go and try and stop that a little bit quicker. Because if you don't, magic, brilliance like this, is there for all to see. Brilliant, brilliant goal there. 
Chesterfield's top scorer in all competitions this season. That's number 12. He might never score a bigger one for them. And having got back into it right at the end of normal time, Notts County have got to rescue this all over again. Mandeville again to take the corner. No Jeff King in the team today. No Jeff King on the bench either, which is a bit surprising. But Mandeville takes the corner kick. It's right there in the six yard box. It comes to Coakley. One nil. Ryan Coakley in the 23rd minute gives Chesterfield the lead they deserve. The first goal of the brand new season. The corner kick into the six yard box. And as it dropped down, it was Ryan Colcliffe that struck it into the roof of the net. Dobra to Colcliffe. Can Colcliffe get around Cook? It's still Ryan Colcliffe inside the penalty area. And Colcliffe across goal! And Mandeville puts it in the back of the net for 2-2. Mandeville standing over it. Mandeville to strike it. Oh, he's over the line. He's over the line. It was bundled over anyway. But I think that was Liam Mandeville's goal. The goalkeeper got a hand on it. But I, I think it was over the line anyway. It's Jamie Grimes now getting forward for Chesterfield. Quigley in the area. Dobra. Still Amando Dobra. Lazy off for Banks. Still Ollie Banks. Jacobs. Naylor. Banks crosses in there for Quigley! Joe Quigley gets his first goal of the season and the Spirates are back in front once again. It's Chesterfield 4, Dorking Wanderers 3, 10 man Dorking Wanderers I might add. But Chesterfield in front once again. Mandeville with the corner to Chesterfield, put in towards the six yard box, headed away by Gold Domateo, only as far as Brandon Horton for Chesterfield. Now to the number 28, Ollie Banks. Banks with the ball towards the back post, looking for Grimes, and it's. Well, it's stabbed in at the far post by Tyrone Williams for Chesterfield. The coasters couldn't deal with the ball towards the back post. It was headed across, and there was Williams to stab it home from a couple of yards out and with five minutes on the clock Chesterfield lead here at Mill Farm by a goal to nil yeah it was just a, a lofted ball into the box wasn't it headed back across the goal and it was a, a tap in in the end from the goal scorer deflection has come off the referee and now it's forward nicely for Mandeville come inside his own half now looking for Armando Dobro up against Imi Karobi Kay is covering well and in the end, it's played back to Horton for Chesterfield, across for Polly Banks. Banks looking for Mandeville, now for Horton again. Ball over the top for Armando Dobber inside the box here, looking for Mandeville, and it's 10 0. Chesterfield doubled their lead, and it was far too easy for the Spyrites. Dobber and Mandeville given the freedom of the Cota's penalty area, and it was the number seven Mandeville who just controlled finish into that bottom left corner. And after 36 minutes, it's 5 0 Chesterfield 2. Horton takes the throw in short to Dobra. Now for Mandeville, across for Sheckleford. Sheckleford up against Luke Conlon. 
Checks his run, finds Tom Naylor, back to Banks, who's going to go for the first time effort. It's a low shot and blocked easily, though, as Horton gives it to K down the right-hand side, takes a touch, and in the end is just played back to the goalkeeper, and it's going to be an easy tap-in for Whitbridge to make it 3-0, and it's an absolute disaster between K and Richardson. What on earth went on there, Jack Ekman? How do you try and sum that one up? Are you allowed to swear on these things? No. Let's keep it uh, broadcastable. All right, so Kay obviously knocking it back, trying to play a short pass back to back to Theo Richardson, who just wasn't sharp enough, really. Greg got there first, tapped it through his legs, and had an empty net to roll it into. It was, it was horrendous, to be honest. And I think the worst thing for, for Adam Murray to look back on was there was absolutely no pressing by Chesterfield. There was no pressure at all. It wasn't. Shackelford to Banks, now to Palmer, across for Grimes, who are just happy to play it across the defence and uh, under no real pressure from the coasters in terms of pressing as Whitehead makes a mistake and now Colcuff is away for Chesterfield, up against Phil Richardson and it's 4-0 Chesterfield here at Mill Farm. Again, far too easy. Mistake in the midfield from Danny Whitehead. Trailing clearance from Luke Conlon. Couldn't quite find the coaster's number three. And it was Ryan Colclough one-on-one -on -one with Theo Richardson. And he buried it into that left corner. And again, Jack, it's just made far, far too easy there. Last chance of the first half coming up. It'll be a corner on this left-hand side. It will be Barry to take it. In swing corner, and it's a goal to Chesterfield. I was just saying that City needed to defend the corner. It was a ping into the penalty area, and Tom Naylor gets his touch to the ball. And Oxford City, for all their hard work in the first half, trail at the break. It's Oxford City nil, Chesterfield one. But now there's an opportunity for. Chesterfield again, it's with Grigg, this is an opportunity, and it's a goal for Chesterfield. City failing to clear their lines, and Andy, you mentioned Chesterfield like a late goal. Yeah, it's just, uh, it, Will Grigg, you just, uh, he was fall asleep for one minute, he just lands to his feet, it was well worked from Chesterfield in all fairness, they just work it into the box. Booking for Hogan. In it comes with pace and in! Palmer with the header, Chesterfield lead. A lot of power on that, and Hudson couldn't keep it out. And the Sparites are on the scoreboard. Oh, we need to see first if this is a foul or not before the goal was given. I feel that he's been clipped there by Liam Mandeville, but however, you have to move on from that. And again, the frailties from set plays have come back to haunt Oldham. The determination there from Ash Palmer to go and get on the end of that cross is brilliant. Massive goal. Some good inventive uh, play there from the uh, Spirits. Underville again. Oh, that's a goal. It's a very, very simple goal. And Altingham have conceded yet again from a set uh, piece. Mandeville's corner and unchallenged. Jamie Grimes, the captain, has risen. And it's a simple header over Ethan uh, Ross. Uh, perhaps Ross didn't, didn't quite get his positioning right there because he, he, he seemed a little bit uh, tentative. It was all too easy, and yes, the, uh, qu qu quite clearly, Ethan Ross started to come for it and then realised as he got a couple of paces towards the ball that it was going to elude him, he had too much on it, and there was Grimes lurking beyond the far post. So once Ethan Ross was committed, then the, the header from Grimes was go going in one place. Naylor. King Dunwella. Naylor to Mandeville. Mandeville with the ball to the back post. And a ready there is a goal from Ryan Colclough. 
Ryan Goldruff pulls one back from the spy right on 15 minutes. A well worked move, King combining well, winning the ball well. Jacobs have played his part too. When Mandeville played the ball into the back of the uh, six yard box, in fact, it was Ryan Colclough coming in at the back to fire home to get Chesterfield their first goal of the game. It's Chesterfield 1, Hartlepool United 2. And you get the feeling there should be a lot more goals in this game. We have three goals in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> the 90. Mandeville, Berry, the cross goes in from Berry, Griggs on it there, chance for Naylor, and Sean Naylor has given Chesterfield surely now what will be the win. From the free kick, and it's Tom Naylor. That put the ball in the net. Greg had his leg, he's parking it, but it was Tom Naylor that put it over the line. And the Sparrows are in front for the first time in the game. Bromley, it's a left wing corner, this will be, Chesterfield lucky with the corners this season, and he, oh it's cleared off the line as it's squeezed in, I think he might have gone in there, it's oh there's a, up. a flag up, flag up, I think, I think the goal, I think that might be the goal given, I think that well, might be the goal given, it well, is, yeah, so, well the flag went up on the far side, so it didn't look as though we were signalling for goal, did it, but it looks as though the goal has been given, I'm not sure who got the final stab on that one, because it was, uh, it was even scrappier than Aldershot's goal, wasn't it? So, anyway, it is 1-1. There are 33 minutes played. And, well, not sure who's the man who's going to be on the score sheet, but it is Aldershot Town 1, Chesterfield 1. He's uh, trying to force something a little bit better, but Minoga, who's had an absolutely fantastic game, we might sort of think of him as the man who broke cabby's leg but he's had a fantastic game today the clearance though King puts a decent ball into the centre and uh, oh it's uh, for everybody's opportunity of Griggs roll that in I think the goal's going to stand it, is. it has Will Grigg has got his third of the season. I think we were all expecting a whistle or a flag. The ball just ran to Will Grigg on the corner of the six-yard area. He had only one thing to do, roll it into the net. But, my word, what another scrappy goal. Aldershot will be wondering what on earth they were doing at the back there. If Chesterfield have defended badly this season, they haven't defended as badly as that. It's Aldershot Town 1, Chesterfield 2. Corner kick then. Chesterfield scored from the only other corner kick they've had. It's played deep towards the far post and it's bumbled it's into the net. It's been given. It's I been think. given again. That might be an OG, I think, but everybody's going up towards Will Grigg once more. It was to the far post. There was no movement in the defence whatsoever. Came to the far post, bundled into the net. Will Grigg taking the plaudits. Has he got a second? Well, who cares? <laughs> it's Aldershot 1, Chesterfield 3. In the near post, but it's back with Mandeville via Dobra and Dobra on the corner of the 18 yard area he drops his shoulder, gets to the edge of the 18 yard area he's played it into the centre, it's an opportunity for Chesterfield to scramble away, Grimes oh it's handball, handball, handball. that was clear in anyway, so quickly scored Lee has scored for Chesterfield to put them back into the lead, it's in the 87th minute, every match this season featuring Chesterfield has featured a goal in the 87th minute or later, Joe Quigley put it in, it looked like it should have been a penalty, who cares now because it came out to the substitute Big Joe who's made it Aldershot Town 3 Chesterfield 4 now on the referee's whistle then Ryan Goldfield will take the free kick curls it in oh yes Ryan Goldfield 
Yes, Chesterfield back in the game at 1-1 with his fifth goal of the season. A free kick on 73 minutes. And Cole Clough puts the spire ice level. It's going to be Will Grigg to take the spot kick against Elliot Justin. to the Spyrites, Royal Grigg the goal scorer from the penalty spot and Chesterfield have the lead for the first time in the game in the 90th minute. James Berry made the run into the box, it was he that caused the mayhem, the defenders took him down, the referee pointed to the spot and Will Griggs sent the goalkeeper the wrong way. Thanks, back to Grimes. Reference him once more. Jones. Holly Banks. Finds one in again! And this time he does score the goal. Holly Banks. Seals the points for the Spyrites. After, after coming so close to begin with, the goalkeeper made a great save, but he had a second opportunity from there. And Ollie Banks has scored in the 96th minute. Freckleton. Jones, Freckleton being uh, hustled by Edsa, does well, moves the ball forward up to Quigley, down the line to the substitute, Berry, and there it is, Dubra scores, Dubra picked out and left unmarked in six yards, and the goal goes in, 82 minutes on the clock, and it's absolute nil, Chesterfield won, Dobra the scorer, Armando Dobra makes it 1-0 Chesterfield. Grimes to Williams. Siron Williams plays the ball in towards Greg. Mandeville's made the run through. It's Liam Mandeville now on the edge of the penalty area. In towards Greg. And Will Greg puts the ball home for Chesterfield in just the second minute of the game. The Spyrites are in front. It's Chesterfield 1. FC Hollyback Town 0. And Will Grigg scores his fifth goal of the season. Just two minutes in. Liam Mandeville got right up there. He's, played, he's been playing that right, right back, right wing back role. Again, he's going to be playing that today. But Mandeville got right up there right in front of the uh, opposition defence and laid the ball off to Grigg and Will Grigg had a simple tap in Chesterville 1, FC Halifax Town 0 Mandeville will take the free kick towards the back post, Grimes is there and it's into the back of the net. Tyrone Williams. Chesterfield have their second. Tyrone Williams is the goal scorer. 23 minutes in.
And with the 90 minute shot, we've now got seven minutes of added time. Very Freckleton. Quigley. Yo, Quigley now. Quigley! The stadium erupts. Yo, Quigley right on the 90th minute. That has put Chesterfield back in front. Joe Quigley gets his third goal of the season and every one of them has been a winning goal and Chesterfield supporters will hope this too will be a winning goal Joe Quigley on 90 minutes the stoppage time board has just gone up we've got 7 minutes to play though well we've played one already 6 more minutes of the game to play and you can't rule anything out yet and it looks like Joe Quigley is the latest player to be booked The home end of the ground resonates to the sound of Joe Quigley's name. It's Chesterfield 3, FC Halifax Town 2. It was late from the referee. Jones, Holly Banks, two on the left. Freckleson and then Berry. Banks cuts the other way for a moment. Now it goes to Freckleson. James Berry on that left touch line. Plays it down the line for Freckleson. Can Freckleson get round his opponent there? It's still Miguel Freckleson. Pulls it into the area. Couldn't find a blue shirt with his oh! And he's fired home in the end by Berry. A slip by the defender. And James Berry took maximum effort from that one. The spot at your level. Freckleton to Jones. Jones has made a good run there. Freckleton found him with it. Jones lays it off. Jacobs finds Berry. The cross comes in from Berry. Greg stretching for it. And he's in the back of the net from Mandeville. Liam Mandeville gives the Sparrows the lead for the first time in the game. And again the move down the left hand side. James Berry again instrumental in the move. He got the ball through to Will Grigg. Will Grigg couldn't quite reach it. it cannoned off the defender, came out to Mandeville who stabbed it home to give Chesterfield the lead Freckleson with the header out of play and looking at Wilson's uh, results so far this season they haven't scored more than one goal away from home in any game and here comes Chesterfield again, this is Jacobs Michael Jacobs takes it around the defender and into the 68th minute of the game Michael Jacobs gives Chesterfield a two goal margin now Jones with the pass. Jacobs with the ball in! And off the post and in from Dobra. Well, that had been coming. Chesterfield have been so on top. And there's their reward. Probably the smallest man on the pitch, Dobra. 
but with his head, he's put the spiral in front. Well, it's so, so important when you are on top to find yourself that goal. And Chesterfield have done that in Armando Dobra. It's been a brilliant start from them in terms of taking the game to Rochdale. It's a brilliant ball in there from Jacobson. Just makes that late run. This is for the teammate. Checkman, he just loses him for that split second. I'm sure Jim McNulty will be asking questions. A free header inside that six yard box. But what a start we've had in this game so far. And now it's been matched with a goal. A real quality player, Ryan Colclough. Well, they would have been delighted to tie him down to that new deal I mentioned earlier. Mandeville with the ball over! Panic is there to find their football. Find there. their football, just hear the wind uh, whistling as well, just getting up a little bit. One, two touch stuff. They know that something will come, so Maidenhead can defend it, whether they can finish it. Thanks. Jonathan the says the ball through, they're peeling for offside, he's not being given. Mandeville. Goal. Because that's good goal there, on number 10. Good finish. Michael Jacobs. I think Neil curled that before the ball was even in the back of the net. He curled that one well. Good curling shot there by Michael Jacobs. Second goal of the season, the summer signing from Pompey. 58 59 minutes gone, and it's the equaliser for Chesterfield. Made in United 1, Chesterfield 1. Thought you might try and find the room for the cross there. It's uh, Jacobs on the ball now. Edge of the area, Ollie Banks back again to Horton. Horton to cross it in this time. Arriving in the back, he's quickly! And Joe Quigley breaks the deadlock with his fourth goal of the season. Seven minutes into the second half, it's taken some doing, but Joe Quigley's bullet header past Grant Smith gives the Sparrows the lead. Good build up play by Chesterfield. The ball in eventually from Brandon Horton cross and Joe Quigley coming into the back of the six yard box to head home. It's Chesterfield one, Robley nil. With the corner kick. So an out swinging ball from King. Banks again goes for the short one. It goes long towards the back of the six-yard box. Naylor's there. Oh, and Naylor's brings it to the net. Tom Naylor gives Chesterfield a 2 0 lead on 74 minutes. The Spotlights have a bit of a margin now. The ball in there from King's Corner. And Naylor. Just managed to get his head on it and put it over the line past Smith. It's Tom Naylor's fifth goal of the season. Great return from a midfield player. Five goals already. And it's Chesterfield 2, Bromley 0. With a little over 15 minutes remaining. Here's Horton. Dobra. Thank you. 
There's the foul, plays it quick. Here's Colclough. A few bodies in. Mandeville's in the box. Griggs is in the box. It's Mandeville right of his header. What a strike. What a goal. Liam Mandeville. Well, they've served at Chesterfield. They've looked bright. It was very smart play from the visitors. A quick free kick taken. The ball came in. There was Liam Mandeville, completely unmarked, just to head it home past the helpless Nathan Ashmore. Nothing he could do. The 31 year old midfielder has scored this season. He's the son of former Barnsley Leicester Huddersfield midfielder Ian Banks. The ball goes into box. Here's Dobra. Oh, outside in the front. Oh, unbelievable. It's whipped in. It was Michael Jacobs with the assist. And there is that man. Joe quickly to poke it home. Jacobs found himself in acres of space. We all thought he was going to load up. Beautiful ball through. And there's that man. And Towns. Old Acre with the corner. Chattering defending well at the moment. Naylor finding Jacobs to the back post. Oh, and he's to the back of the net by Oli Banks. Jacobs and Naylor combining well. Indirectly from the corner, the ball lifted in by Jacobs to the back post, and it's an Oli Banks header that gives uh, Chesterfield the lead. James Berry has got sharp to beat, he could be in here, Berry. Lays it back, Naylor. Banks. Sheffield again to Naylor. It's a good ball from Naylor. Holly Banks in with a chance here. Banks into the six yard box and knocked home by Will Grigg to make it 2 0. Right on the hour mark. A slick move by Chesterfield. Holly Banks doing the spade work there. Ball into the six yard box and it was on a plate for Will Grigg on 60 minutes to give the Spy Rights a 2 0 lead. Scorer of the opening goal. A little ball in there for Berry, who couldn't quite do anything with that. Comes out now to Sheckleford. Banks once more, edge of the penalty area. Three or four blue shirts in that penalty area. Naylor on the ball for the spy rights. Jacobs, Oldacre. Down with Oldacre. Kills one! Oh, that was a beauty! That was an absolute beauty from down Oldacre. He picked his spot. And he put it right into the top corner past Billy Johnson, who was given little chance of, of saving that. It's now an old Lakers first goal of the season for the Sparrows, and what a peach it was. Ball is taken. It's Colclough on it straight away. Goal Club drives it, keeper saves it, and it's into the back of the net from Ash Palmer. It was a good move on that right hand side. Goal Club it was doing a lot of the work there. The initial shot was blocked, but Ash Palmer fired it home in the end past Billy Johnson to make it. Get 4-0 now to the Spy Jacobs plays it to Horton. Gets the return ball from Brandon Horton. Horton again now with the cross into the penalty area. Mix up there between the defenders and they've got away with that one. White gets the ball away. Palmer's header denies Luthwaite. Tom Naylor. Jacobs. Horton. Michael Jacobs again, edge of the penalty area. Comes now to Naylor. And Tom Naylor crashes it home to make it 5 0. Tom Naylor in the 85th minute has given the Spyrites a 5 0 lead now. York City's defence rocking there. Dobra, that's a great ball. Ollie Banks with a chance. Banks with his shot. 
and Banks makes it 1 0. Molly Banks with his third goal of the season. And he struck it hard, he struck it low. And Rory Watson couldn't keep the ball out. Will Gregg moments earlier, his header hitting the crossbar, very unlucky. But Chesterfield retained the possession. Dobra received it on the edge of the area. It went back out wide to Ollie Banks again. And Banks had one thing in his mind. Hit it across the goal, hit it hard, hit it low. And the spy right side of the lead in the 49th minute of the game. Williams to Grimes, Horton wanting it on the left. That's a good ball again from Jamie Grimes. Some excellent passes from Grimes tonight. Horton cutting inside on his wrong foot. Gets it back on the left. Cross goes to the back of the six-yard box. Headed away as far as Naylor! And Tom Naylor makes it 2-0 to the spy rights. Tom Naylor has his seventh goal of the season. For a defensive midfield player, that's an excellent rate of scoring. Seven goals this season for Tom Naylor now. And again, some great movement by Chesterfield to produce the goal. Naylor on 61 minutes. And the game slipping away from York City here. Naylor struck it really well. And it's Chesterfield 2, York City 0. Grigg again now. Horton. Colclough wanting it. Ryan Colclough. Horton almost in his way there, really. Colclough finds Banks inside the penalty area. Banks with the shot. Good save, and Grigg puts it home. Will Grigg fires Chesterfield into a 3 0 lead. Good work on this near side by Colclough. The ball came in. Saved by Watson and tapped home by Will Grigg. Will Grigg getting goal number seven himself now. A bit of a competition going on between him and Naylor, I think. And the Spyrites now have a 3 0 lead here. Will Grigg on 70, in the 71st minute giving Chesterfield that 3 0 lead. Number 23, Xander Zaziba is coming on to replace Kai Kennedy, number 21. So there are the changes. As the ball goes back again to Rory Watson, Will Grigg takes it off him. Grigg with a chance here. Oh, what a goal from Will Grigg! Fantastic goal from Will Grigg. His second of the game. And he took the... It was a mistake by the goalkeeper initially. But he then took the ball off him. Turned his opponent. And slotted the ball home. Very calmly from a very tight angle. Will Grigg showed a bit of class there. There was no hurry about it at all. He took his time. He aimed it exactly where he wanted it to go. Richards then with the delivery. Good header out though. Chesterfield might have a chance here to break away on the counter attack. And they've got bodies flooding forwards. Banks gets the shot away and scores. It's clinical from Ollie Banks on the counter attack. And Chesterfield are a goal to the good after 20 minutes. No stopping that one, right into the bottom corner. Ollie Banks with the finish. It came from an error. For Kidderminster in giving the ball away and presenting the counter-attacking opportunity. Naylor with the assist. Banks still had an awful lot to do. Providing the finish superbly well. 1 0. The league leaders are ahead.
Dobra. A little layoff there back to Freckleton. Sliding challenge from Oxley Chamberlain wasn't a good one, but he got round him anyway. It's still there for Grigg, and on the follow up, it's in. And it's Ollie Banks again at the double. And just look at what it means to the travelling Chesterfield fans. 2 1. And the league leaders are back in control. Well, it certainly wasn't the prettiest goal you'll see all season. But for Chesterfield, they don't care at all. Grigg managing to keep the ball in play as he just ricocheted back off the goalkeeper. And there with the final touch, Ollie Banks. It wasn't as brilliant as his first, but he won't mind about that at all. Referee again disinterested. All the advantage here being played and the opportunity for Chesterfield really killed the game off. Option to the left, it's Naylor. Back across to the back stick, game set and match. Well, that will now be that. Will Grigg with the header. Again, another superbly well-worked move on the counter-attack. Chesterfield are staying top of the league. It's another Naylor assist, that time with the cross to pick out Grigg. And, well, a striker of his quality wasn't going to pass up an opportunity like that. 3-1, game over. the supporters ramp up the noise a little bit Aluwal gets the ball away the header from Naylor Grigg Coltluff Coltluff with the ball he's sliding in there it's Amanda Dobre 1-0 to the Spyrites and Chesterfield have the early goal in the second half. Hartigan. Pritchard plays it across the field to Carno on the far side who kept it in play only for the benefit of Liam Mandeville and Mandeville now bringing it forward Dobra to his right it's still Mandeville now Dobra back against to Mandeville Mandeville shots well blocked Grigg lays it off another shot this time for Mandeville and it's over the line from Will Grigg right on the hour Will Green gets his 10th goal of the season and the Spyrites take it to their lead. And uh, again, Carnu's in there causing problems, but Mandeville doing well. Naylor, Mandeville once more. Chesterfield getting it away really well here. 
the ball played back now to Horton. He's got the luxury of the back pass if he wants it. Instead, it comes to Colclough. Horton makes the run ahead of Colclough this time. Colclough retaining possession. He finds Naylor. Now Brandon Horton. Horton looking for somebody to cross to. The pull back in the end. Almost made Banks. He's gone now eventually. To Michael Jacobs. And the Spirites surely now have won this game. Colclough down the left, Brandon Horton down the left, the ball played in, a defensive slip, and Michael Jacobs with the finish. He's only been on the field a few moments, but Michael Jacobs has put the game beyond doubt now, surely. With 15 minutes remaining, it's Chesterfield 3, Barnet 0. Oh, anyway, we can now resume the game. Laurie Walker takes the kick. Naylor didn't quite make the header, but Jones is helping out. Jones over the top. Quigley's in now. Joe Quigley with a real chance here. And Joe Quigley! On the field from the substitute bench. Give the Spirites a fourth goal. And the bees are well and truly stung now. Signed from Billericay in September, a centre half was with Ipswich as a youngster. They signed him on non contract terms. As I mentioned, they're still under a transfer embargo. Banks, Jacobs is out wide, Griggs in the middle, Colclough and Mandeville arriving, that's a great ball, and it's an opening goal, Grigg was in there, such a good cross to pick him out, and Chesterfield in front at Rootsall. quality goal here, there's a few fans looking for offside there I think, a few appeals from the players there, Colclough makes the run and then Banks gets the ball out wide here to Jacobs, this is a football league goal, it's a really good delivery, we saw one of those just earlier and there's Grigg, doesn't have to do too much really, just gets in between the two centre-halves there, he's got a simple task, he's just using the pace on the ball just to guide that into the bottom corner but quality goal, really hard to defend against, a little bit against the run of play but this is what the quality that Chesterfield possess now. Gorgeous cross.
Grimes. Horton. Dobra. Those two working well together. Dobra finds Oldacre. Oldacre's ball. Oh, a chance there for Banks. And he scrambled over the line. Chesterfield will break the ice. Oh, 53 minutes. Gets his 11th goal of the season, and the Sparrows are in front. 53 minutes on the clock, it's taken for Chesterfield to break a stubborn East Wind defence down. But well, they've done it now. All they can ball played through there, and uh, Banks playing the ball into the six yard box. Grigg got it over the line. The goal poacher that he is, it's number 11 for Will Grigg this season. Just going back into play there. Uh, I'll tell you the tennis in the moment is uh, Eastley trying to get forward. It's Scott Quigley on the ball at the moment. Out to this near side of the field. Kept in play by Enzio Baldevine. Baldevine taking on Horton. Hodgson. And uh, Chesterfield got intercepted by Naylor. The spot ice can break here. Will Green's got to watch the offside. It's Dobra on the ball at the moment. Finds Oli Banks. Banks with a great opportunity, and Ollie Banks makes it 2-0. Ollie Banks scores goal number six of the season for him. A great play by Chesterfield. And the Sparrights have a commanding lead now. that one off a chance now as Voldemine gets forward cross goes in towards McCallum at the back and McCallum wins the header and a good save by Tyra to the nice got quickly the first real proper save that Harry Tyler had to make this afternoon McCallum's header quickly trying to apply the finish and a good save by Tyra and now it's Brandon Holm getting away here with the spy right Brandon Holm plays it inside the Dobra Dobra onto Banks, Ollie Banks with the shot, and Ollie Banks gets his second of the game, and surely now the Spyrites are out of sight. The great move forward, Brandon Horton first of all, then Amando Dobra, he threatened to shoot himself, but when he laid it off to Ollie Banks, Banks hit it hard and low to give Chesterfield their third goal. Halfway through the second half, it's Chesterfield 3, Eastley 0. And surely now, the three points are staying here in Chesterfield.
Freckleton to Shackleford takes it past Holmes plays it inside to Curtis good turn by Curtis King has made a good run down the right here King now with Quigley on the edge of the six yard box and Joe Quigley fires home to make it one apiece the referee signalled the goal it was a good move by Chesterfield the ball played out to King on this near side played a great ball into Quigley and this time he made the right connection uh, beg your pardon Michael Jacobs just under two minutes of the 45 remain Abudu on the ball for Chesterfield plays it back to Freckleton on the halfway line Shackleton, Shackleton in space out there on the far side again James Berry ahead of him down that left hand touch line Berry plays it in instead to Jacobs it's a great ball through there and a chance for Berry it comes across the face of the goal and the Spyrats denied for a moment well the ball's gone in from Harley Curtis Southport in the end all over the place and Harley Curtis has put Chesterfield in front Rappleton to the centre King out on the right there Very has it played short back again to Jeff King King's made a good run now down that right hand side and uh, I think it was Doyle there that won it back well Chesterfield keep the possession though it's James Berry Berry trying to go all the way he might go all the way oh yes he'll be happy with that one James Berry took it on all, it was all his own work Chesterfield's third goal Run back again by Southport. Tyler Walton. No foul. Walton not happy about that either. And a chance now for Liam Jessup for Chesterfield. Jessup taking on Thompson. Jessup gets the cross in. It goes to Old. Oh, it's gone in. Towards the back post and he's gone in. Liam Jessup scores Chesterfield's fourth goal on 78 minutes. Ball in from Morgan. It's go. It's gone all the way through. Battle there between uh, Carver and Freckleton. I think Freckleton gets it away. As far as Harley Curtis and now Chesterfield will get it away. And a chance now for Marshall. He's the only man upfield at the moment. Joined now by Jessup. It's Tom Marshall. Marshall, a good little ball through for Jessup, and Jessup's going to get another one, and he does. Two minutes after his first first team goal, he gets his second first team goal. Great combination between the two. The clearance from Harley Curtis, and it was all youngsters' work there. Harley Curtis with the clearance. Tom Marshall made the run. I'm sure Marshall wanted his shot on goal himself. He realised that there wasn't the room. The chance seemed to have gone, and it was a great little ball through from Marshall to Jessup for Jessup to finish. Frackleton to Abudu. Curtis just getting back to his feet. Jeff King well advanced down the right there. Taking on uh, Watson. King cutting inside. I think he fancies a try himself. Lays it off to Bohut in. Oh, and he's gone over the line, has he? No, he has now. Tom Marshall makes sure, but I think the goal has got to go to the number 45, Ali Mohuddin. These will be testing for Harley Paul today because Chesterfield have got some big players who go and attack the ball and it has been a weakness. As it's lifted into the area by Mandeville, big clearance there by Manny Dizarue in front of his own goal, uh, volley towards goal and in! It was a snapshot there from Chesterfield on the edge of the area, left-footed volley into the bottom corner, past Joel Dixon, and it's Armando Dobra that gives the Spyrites the lead.
five minutes on the clock. It's Hartlepool United nil, Chesterfield won. Yeah, exactly what uh, we didn't need. It was actually, we won the first header. It was a good header and uh, just dropped the edge of the box. And Dobras just hit it. Uh, he's, he's, it looked like he just concentrating on hitting, getting good contact on it. Just dropped the bottom corner, but no one close enough to him. And uh, very disappointing after a, a good header from the first set piece. And it's going to be Darren Oldacre who scored a cracking goal from the edge of the area earlier in the season. He's only got the one so far. That's Oldacre! Oh, yes! Darren Oldacre makes it 1 1. It's his second goal of the season. And it's another cracking goal from Darren Oldacre. From the dead ball situation, the spot archer level. Chesterfield 1, Aldershot 1. Well, there were goals in the game down at the recreation ground uh, when these two teams met back in September. The Sparrows were 4-3 winners that day and you suspect there's going to be more goals here today as well. And Grimes and Palmer both going up from the back for this. Freckleton stays back, everybody else up there. Ash Palmer. Dobra, Freckleton, Colclough is wide, this is Colclough, Colclough shots, and when Colclough put the spy ice in front, it was coming, it was always coming, and Ryan Colclough gave the spy ice the lead on 65 minutes for the first time in the game. And it's Ryan Colclough's sixth goal of the season. Harfield. Shackleford. And now Dobra. Banks, Berry wants it played down the left, that's the ball, James Berry now, he's got a row to beat, still Berry wants to cut inside, goes the other way instead, onto his left foot, pulls the ball back, save, and he's in the back of the net from Will Grigg, Will Grigg finally gets goal number 12 this, of the season, and the Spotlights take a 3-1 lead. with the header Quigley Dobra Naylor Chesterfield threatening again here Naylor in for Dobra 4-1 another sweeping move by the Spirites and Amando Dobra finishes it this time Chesterfield in an instructive mood at the moment in the stoppage time period. Armando Dobra makes it Chesterfield 4, Aldershot Town 1.